Welcome to this video memory of your luxurious cruise aboard the MS Stottendam. Citizens of San Diego proudly refer to their home as America's finest city. It certainly is true that San Diego enjoys an almost perfect climate. Mild, sunny days provide the ideal conditions to revel in the outdoor beauty of this California city, sixth largest in the United States. San Diego is defined partly by its watery surroundings. A splendid natural harbor is home to military vessels, and Mission Bay is the setting for recreational ones. Along the sparkling coastline, surfers, sun worshipers, and nature lovers find the perfect wave, stretch of sand, or scenic viewpoint. From the old mission founded by Father Junipera Serra, to the world-famous zoo nestled in Balboa Park, San Diego has attractions both natural and historic to keep visitors entertained. As you stepped aboard, the magic of an ocean voyage began. The atmosphere of warm hospitality surrounded you as you began to explore the Statendam. This gracious welcome was matched by the traditions and skills of more than a century of seafaring expertise. A gala evening of fun was in store as the captain, his officers and staff joined in saying, welcome aboard. May I wish you all a very happy stay with us. Thank you for all coming to this party. After the party, the most delightful dinner. And may God bless you. Located more than 2,000 miles from the American continent and 2,000 miles from the nearest major island group in the South Pacific, the Hawaiian Islands form the world's most isolated archipelago. Lying at the southeast end of the chain, Hawaii is the youngest of the islands and is the most active in its continual creation. On its windward side is the charming town of Hilo. Hilo is Hawaii County's capital city and major port. The University of Hawaii's second campus is located in Hilo, and the city is also home to a flourishing artistic community. A soft flower-scented breeze caresses the air, and sightseeing opportunities include spectacular scenery and majestic volcanic peaks. Some of the island's most impressive sites are to be found at Volcanoes National Park. Created by Congress in 1916, the 377 square mile park has a fascinating mix of terrain, ranging from arid expanses of lava to lush green jungles, and a climate ranging from desert to rainforest. Kilauea is one of the island's two active volcanoes. It has erupted violently during the last decade, spewing out seething lakes of molten rock, curtains of fire, and red-hot lava.
The collapsed summit, 4,000 foot high Kilauea cauldron, is an awe-inspiring two miles across. There are deep fissures hissing with steam, sulfuric vents, and lava tubes found throughout the caldera. The Hawaiian Islands are just the peaks of a gigantic mountain chain, most of which lies under sea. Due to tectonic plate motion, the islands are moving slowly to the northwest. The residents of Kalapana found this out the hard way as their community was swallowed up by advancing lava from Kilauea. While Hawaii is the youngest island in the chain and has ongoing volcanic activity which adds to its size, there is yet another island forming off the southeast coastline. Luihi Seamount will probably make an appearance above the waves in another 60,000 years, taking over the role of baby of the family. A lush profusion of plants, trees, and flowers flourish in Hilo's balmy tropical climate. If it's paradise you're looking for, the windward side of Hawaii is the place to come. Because this is the rainy side of the island, it supports a dazzling array of plant life. The area around Hilo is the heart of the world's orchid industry, and more than 30,000 species of this exotic flower are grown here. This is also a major macadamia growing region, and visitors can tour the factory where the delicious nuts are made into a mouth-watering array of treats. Rain-swept valleys, magnificent gardens, and majestic volcanic peaks are just a few of the scenic delights you'll find near Hilo on this windward side of the Big Island. While the Stottendam sailed serenely through the sea, you enjoyed the ship's comforts from sun-swept decks to elegant lounges. Behind the scenes, the captain, officers, and staff worked continuously to ensure a safe, serene journey. At one time, the ship's bells rang out the watch and warned of danger. Today, the latest computer and satellite technology are utilized on the bridge and in the control room. The Stottendam's radio officer explains just how much technology is changing the way ships operate. Yeah, in, in the last few years, radio communication has changed quite dramatically. Um, we no longer use the, the old Morse key and um, terrestrial telephone calls are um, no longer used. We find that uh, everything that goes out of the ship now um, in a communication sense is via satellite. We'll find that the captain and the hotel manager and the passengers will all um, communicate direct with uh, their recipients without the radio officer's intervention at all. The radio officer is probably going to evolve into a technical officer rather than a radio officer, a communications officer. All of this high-tech equipment is in the hands of skilled officers with years of ocean-going experience. Their special talent is to blend the most up-to-date technology with some timeless techniques. The bridge can be in direct contact with the control room. Here, too, technology has rapidly changed the way things work. The control room is the heart of the Staten Down, and from here, the engine room staff oversees all technical aspects of the crews. The Staten Down's chief engineer explains about this control center of the ship. He has altogether five diesel generator sets, 
There are two big ones, uh, two 12 cylinders, and there are three small ones, uh, three eight cylinder engines to provide electricity for the electromotors that are propelling the ships. We've got two main propellers, and the number of RPM on those propellers will vary from 50 to 150 revolutions per minute, depending on the speed of the ship, of course. The average cruising speed is uh, 20 miles, and the consumption of fuel oil will then be approximately 120. Uh, metric tons of fuel, heavy fuel oil. The electricity we produce, and this is uh, without uh, the propulsion engines, the electricity that uh, is needed all through the ship, is approximately 6,000 kilowatts. Of course, there are stabilizers for smoothing out rough seas. And the Statendam produces its own fresh water from seawater, 150,000 gallons a day. The skilled staff in the engine room, the captain, and the expert officers on the bridge work together to keep you cruising smoothly through the sea. Formed by prehistoric volcanic upheavals, Oahu rises from the ocean in majestic beauty. The modern skyscrapers of downtown Honolulu guard a rich historical heritage. The capital city has a population of almost half a million and is located on the southern shore of Oahu. These markers designate points of historical interest throughout Hawaii. With the arrival of Christian missionaries in the 1820s, Hawaii's destiny was dramatically changed. The mission houses chronicle the meeting of the two cultures. The Iolani Palace was built by Hawaii's last king, Kalakaua, and was Queen Liliuokalani's place of imprisonment before the overthrow of the monarchy. It's the only palace in America and has been lovingly restored by the state of Hawaii and the friends of Iolani Palace. One charming aspect of Honolulu is that even in the heart of downtown, you find touches of the tropical. A visit to the National Memorial Cemetery provides a touching reminder of heroes' patriotism.
And equally moving is the Arizona Memorial, a submerged tribute to those who gave their lives for their country. Dining on board the Staten Dam was a day-long indulgence. The Java Cafe was the spot to relax with that first cup of coffee. Lunch was served at the Lido Cafe, or outside at a scenic poolside buffet. The elegant explorer's lounge was the place to meet for afternoon tea. As a special occasion, the Royal Dutch Tea was an opulent display of tempting treats. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Royal Dutch Tea, your high tea on the high seas. The traditions and creativity of fine cuisine were elevated to an art form on board the Staten Down. An army of chefs worked round the clock to produce these dining delights. Their skills ranged from delicate artistry to bold strokes of creation. From the dazzling dessert extravaganza to the theatrical presentation of Baked Alaska, the food was simply fabulous. <laughs> Floating on the seas, removed from the rest of Hawaii, Kauai is a breathtakingly beautiful island jewel. Romantic newcomers in the 19th century called Kauai the Garden Isle and today's visitors are still enchanted by the beauty of this island. Formed by a single volcano, Kauai is the oldest and most northerly of the main Hawaiian islands. Its relative isolation meant that Kauai was never conquered by Kamehameha when he set out to unite the other islands. Instead, it took his diplomatic skills to convince the king of Kauai that he should join the confederation in exchange for remaining in power as governor. Waialiali, the island's central misty peak, is said to be the wettest spot on Earth, with an annual rainfall of 486 inches. Combined with cascading waterfalls and seven lovely rivers, this moist tropical atmosphere creates habitats for plants and birds found nowhere else on Earth.
Throughout the island of Kauai, there are scenic wonders that rival each other in their magnificence. The Napali coast, best seen from the air, was the area inhabited by the first natives. What happened to these people is unknown, but there are still traces of their agricultural terraces. Kauai's north shore is simply breathtaking. In the upper valley lies the 917-acre Hanalei National Wildlife Refuge. And if you're looking for that perfect crescent-shaped beach, look no further than Hanalei Bay. The white sandy beaches of Kauai are legendary. Hollywood immortalized this island paradise in films such as South Pacific, Blue Hawaii, King Kong, and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Also found on the scenic north shore are the wet and dry caves which legend says were dug by the goddess Pele. The Kilauea Point National Wildlife Refuge is the place to go if you're a bird watcher or just like to watch local wildlife enjoying a protected sanctuary. Two-footed wildlife gravitates towards Princeville, especially if golf is the activity of choice. The north shore of Kauai is the Windward Coast, so this is the side of the island with most of the lush vegetation and tropical foliage. The southern and western coasts also boast some spectacular natural attractions. The Waialua River is Hawaii's only navigable waterway. Boats are the only way to reach the lovely Fern Grotto, where serenades are the usual order of the day. overlooking the Waialua River is an ancient heiau, or temple. The remains resemble the marais of Tahiti, pointing up the common ancestry of the island people. The natural beauty of Kauai is seemingly without end. Waimea Canyon, known as the Grand Canyon of the Pacific, is 10 miles long and averages one mile wide. There is nothing average, however, in the stunning views of multicolored rock laced with tropical greenery. The views are simply outstanding. A drive to Kalalau Lookout affords the sight of both the canyon and the lovely Nepali coast. The post-Polynesian history of Kauai really began with the cultivation of sugar. 
The first town on the island was Kaloa, and today it's a quaint reminder of those sugar plantation days. While the town of Kaloa is the center of early European settlements, the southern beaches of Poipu are among the favorite destinations of contemporary travelers. Resorts capitalize on the sunshine and sparkling waters along this southern shore. Monk seals seem to know that they enjoy protected status when they come ashore to share the beaches. Ancient Hawaiian culture has been preserved on Kauai, alongside European plantation heritage and modern resort luxury. Overriding all of man's accomplishments is the scenic splendor of the place. As you've discovered, the island of Kauai is beautiful beyond compare. As the Statendam sailed on to your next fascinating port of call, there was a dazzling array of fun on board. Perhaps you visited the crow's nest for a quiet drink before dinner. Did you dance the night away? For a casual evening, the theater offered up current movies. Lady Luck beckoned from the exciting casino. As you quickly discovered, a highlight of the cruise was the glittering entertainment presented by world-class performers. As we approached the island called Maui, our hearts were filled with joy and our eyes were dazzled by the beauty. These words from the 1826 diary of an arriving missionary are often echoed by modern day visitors as they explore Hawaii's second largest island. While each of the Hawaiian islands has its own unique magic, it can be argued that Maui has the widest range of scenic splendor. The variety of sights is astonishing from the protected beaches of Kanapali to the bustle of Lahaina, from the rainforest paradise of Hana to the surfing beaches of Hokaipa, from the lush greenery of Eel Valley to the lunar-like craters of Haleakala. A glance at a map of Maui shows clearly its birth from two volcanoes. The western one, Pu'ukukui, rises to an elevation of 5,800 feet forming the eastern section of Maui is Haleakala, the world's largest dormant volcano. Tucked among the ridges and canyons of the Pu'ukakui volcano is the Iao Valley. In 1790, King Kamehameha waged a bloody battle to bring Maui into his realm. He was ultimately successful, and around the turn of the 18th century, he moved his capital to Lahaina. There's nothing left in the lush Iao Valley to remind us of the historic and brutal fight that took place here. Instead, there's a peaceful hush to the hiking trails which meander through this state park. Most notable here is the landmark Iao's Needle, a cinder cone pinnacle that stretches heavenward 
and dominates the surrounding crags and peaks. The broad valley which lies between the two volcanoes is the agricultural heart of the island. Acres of sugarcane rustle in the breezes which flow between the two halves of Maui. When Kamehameha moved his capital to Lahaina, he was simply taking advantage of a favored spot of Hawaiian aristocracy. The name Lahaina means unmerciful sun, and this seems to be exactly what most visitors are looking for. By early in the 19th century, two conflicting interest groups were arriving at Kamehameha's capital city. Hoilers were looking for new sources of their livelihood, and missionaries were in search of souls to save. Both groups were to prove devastating to Hawaiian culture. The whalers spread disease and alcohol among the native population, while the missionaries systematically eradicated all Hawaiian traditions and beliefs. Despite the intercultural clashes, Lahaina survived and is one of the most charming towns in the islands. It has been declared a national historic site, and there's no denying the charm of strolling along its quaint streets. West of Lahaina, the resort mecca of Kanapali has been created along a sparkling expanse of sandy beach. Luxury hotels, restaurants, and Whaler's Village are but a few of the vacation attractions here. Linking Kanapali with Lahaina is the sugarcane train, by far the most fun way of traveling between resorts and town. One of the most awe-inspiring places in the Hawaiian Islands is Haleakala. Its name, House of the Sun, seems particularly apt if you arrive for an early morning bike ride or in time for sunrise. The drive to the summit is an experience in itself. This is the world's most steeply ascending road. The views from atop Haleakala are uniquely lovely. 
The crater falls away in swirling patterns of brown and red earth. The landscape is both desolate and fascinating. The ecosystem found here is so fragile and so unusual that the National Park has been awarded the status of an International Biosphere Reserve by UNESCO. Two wonderful examples of Hawaii's flora and fauna can be seen at Haleakala. The delicate silver sword and the state bird, the nene goose. Thanks to dedicated conservation efforts, both are making a welcome comeback. Before we leave Maui, let's take a bird's eye look at the natural beauty of this island. Even a partial sampling of this island's charms will leave you with a new phrase in your vocabulary. Maui no ka oi. Maui is the best. From the spacious decks of the Staten Dam to its public rooms, everyone finds their own special place on board. Here's a chance for you to remember the stunning art, cozy corners, and elegant surroundings of your floating resort. Located on the western coast of the Big Island of Hawaii, Kona is an historic and picturesque town.
Dotted along the coastline, you'll find quaint island churches and monuments to the island's pagan past. One of the most interesting of Kona's ancient sites is the place of refuge at Honaunau Bay. The sanctuary was a site of absolution for native lawbreakers. If they could make it across the brutal volcanic landscape or through shark-infested waters to the sanctuary, they were safe. If they failed to reach the sanctuary, they were instantly put to death. At Kealakakua Bay, a monument to Captain Cook marks the spot where he met his death at the hands of angry natives in the 18th century. He and his crew had put into the Kona coast for provisions. The local chief thought that Cook was the incarnation of the god Lono, and he was well taken care of during his stay. He and his crew left, only to return to make some vital repairs to the mast of their ship. When the chief realized that Cook was a mere mortal, tempers flared and a Hawaiian was shot and killed. In retaliation, James Cook was clubbed to death. Today, the waters of the bay are a marine reserve, making for spectacular underwater sights. You can swim, snorkel, or scuba dive in the warm tropical waters. And in Kona's underwater world, you discover schools of exotic fish and a spectacular coral reef. Kona is famous for its excellent deep sea sport fishing. Kona coffee is legendary, and lush coffee plantations are an integral part of the island's economy. In most coffee-growing regions of the world, shade trees are planted to protect the delicate coffee plant. Here, the daily cloud cover provides the protection. And this is the only place in the United States where coffee is commercially produced. One of the most famous institutions on the Big Island is Parker Ranch. Visitors can stroll through the lovely homes, which were built with traditional materials. The legacy of the land lives on in the hearts of those who maintain the Parker Ranch today. Kona offers a wonderful mix of Hawaiian history, spectacular water sports, and incredible scenery. The pleasures of an ocean voyage are uniquely wonderful. The feel of salt air and sea spray provided an invigorating lift to the spirit. As you cruise toward New Horizons, the expansive reach of the ocean was the backdrop for fun. And as the wake disappeared behind you, memories were born that will never be forgotten. Just 50 miles south of the California border with Mexico is Ensenada. It lies on the sweeping bay of Todos Santos, 
and has grown in recent years from an isolated town to a booming city. Hernan Cortez made a brief stop at Baja California during his explorations. He was impressed by the rugged beauty of the area, but once he realized there was no gold, he moved on. Near Ensenada, this beauty is best illustrated at La Bufadora, the blowhole. Waves come crashing against steep cliffs, sending plumes of water high into the air. The city of Ensenada has grown quickly in recent years, thanks to increased tourism. The drive south from San Diego is a scenic one, and more and more passenger ships are calling it Ensenada. The downtown streets are filled with handicraft markets and shops of every description. Hussong's is a famous bar, but be prepared for a boisterous atmosphere if you decide to stop by. Before tourism took hold, fishing and agriculture were the mainstays of the local economy. The climate supports the cultivation of grapes, so there are several wineries near Ensenada, most of which welcome visitors. The little town of Ensenada has now achieved big city status, and its proximity to the border ensures that this growth is likely to continue. The gold that early explorers sought turns out to be the dollars brought by tourists who come to appreciate the beauty of Baja. We wish you treasured memories of colorful ports, superb scenery, and the charming M.S. Statendam. And we hope we'll see you again soon for another cruise that is magical, marvelous, and memorable.